This is going to take a few minutes because it's three chapters and I want to read every one of them because I was sitting here praying and just thinking about everything that's going on in the world and what to believe and I know that the news media just makes it so much more worse than what it really is and I know there's a virus and I'm not even going to go into any of that but so that's kind of what I was praying because I just like what do we do what do we believe what are we supposed to be doing at this time and I said, just give me a word. I need a word. And immediately, Ezekiel 7 just flashed across my mind. So I started there, but then I went to 8 and 9. And it was like, I know this happened. There was something happening in Jerusalem at that time. Is why Ezekiel was saying all this. But it's just like, it's for now. It's everything in it is just like it's for now. So I'm going to read it and let the word hit you where it needs to hit you because this was very powerful to me because I already believe that it's a judgment that there's and that we're in the end of time. I believe that we're starting Jacob's trouble or something. This is global. This is not just some little thing. This is global. They have shut the whole world down. And I believe these three chapters explains why this has taken place so i'm just going to start reading i might stop and say something it's ezekiel 7 7 starting in 1 more moreover the word of yahweh came to me saying and you son of man thus says adonai yahweh to the land of israel an end so he's saying israel but we are israel if we're grafted in the end is coming upon the four corners of the land. Now the end has come upon you, and I will send my anger upon you, and will judge you according to your ways, and I will pay you back for all your abominations. And my eye will not spare you, neither will I have pity, but I will pa back, but I will pay back your ways upon you, and your abominations will be in your midst, and you will know that I am Yahweh. Thus says Adonai Yahweh, an evil, behold, an evil, behold, the most evil has come. And this is actually talking about the destruction of the temple at that time, but still, it has a prophetic meaning for right now. An end has come, the end has come, it watches for you, behold, it has come. The morning comes to you, O you who dwell in the land, the time has come. The day of trouble is near, and not the joyful call of the mountains. Now I will shortly pour out my fury upon you and will accomplish my anger upon you and I will judge you according to your ways and I will pay you back for all your abominations and my eye will not spare neither will I have pity I will pay you back according to your ways and your abominations that are in your midst and you will know that I am the Lord who strikes behold the day behold it is come the morning is gone the rod is blossomed pride has budded Violence has risen into a rod of wickedness. None of them or their multitude will remain, nor of anything of theirs, neither will there be wailing for them. Then the time has come, the day draws near. Do not let the buyer rejoice, do not let the seller mourn. It's really weird that siren went off right when I'm saying this. Wrath is upon the whole multitude of them, for the seller will not return to that which is sold, all they were, although they were still alive, for the vision is touching the whole multitude of those who will not return. Neither will anyone strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the horn even to make all ready, but no one goes to the battle, for my wrath is upon the whole multitude. The sword is outside, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field will die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence, will devour him. But for those of them who escape will escape, and will be on the mountains like doves in the valley, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands will be feeble, and all knees will be weak as water. They will also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror will cover them, and shame be upon all their faces and baldness of their head. 
They will cast their silver in the streets, and their gold will be removed. Their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver, to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yahweh. They will not satisfy their souls nor fill their innards, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Their silver and gold is the stumbling block of their iniquity, and in the end, it is not going to do them one bit of good. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things in it. Therefore I have set it far from them, and I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, into the wicked of the earth for plunder, and they will pollute it. I will turn my face from them, and they will pollute my secret place, for the robbers will enter it and defile it. Make a chain for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Therefore I will make the worst of the nations, and they will possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places will be defiled. Destruction comes, and they will seek shalom, but there will be none. Trouble will come upon trouble, and rumor upon rumor, and they will seek a vision of the prophet. But the Torah will perish from the priest of and council from the old men. The king will mourn, and the prince will be clothed with isolation, and the hands of the people of the land will be troubled. I will do to them according to their way, and I will judge them according to their deserts, deserts, and they will know that I am the Lord. And it happened in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of Adonai, Yahweh, fell upon me there. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness of the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins, downward fire, and from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of a hand, and he took me by a lock of my head. And the Spirit lifted me between the heavens and the earth, and brought me in the visions of God for Jerusalem, to the house, to the door of the inner gate that looks toward the north, where the seat of the image of jealousy was. Now this is what really, really, really spoke to me. If the rest already didn't too. But the bottom it says, the jealousy of, of the Lord because of the desecration of the sanctuary. So it is talking about that time that the Maccabees had to restore it because it was defiled and broke down. But it's still, I believe, still holds true today because the bible says that the word of god is as active and alive so it's always for us no matter when it was written or what it was about and behold the glory of god of it, the god of israel was there according to the vision that i saw in the valley he said to me son of man lift up your eyes now toward the way of the north so i lifted my eyes the way of the north and behold northward at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy was in the entry. He said, Furthermore, son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abomination that the house of Israel commits here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary, but you will see anger still greater. You will see again still greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. And he said to me, Son of man, now dig in the wall. And when I had dug in the wall, there was a door. And he said to me, Go in and observe the wicked abominations that they are doing in there. I underlined all that because it's really, really speaking about what's going on here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed all around on the wall. And seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel stood before them, and in the midst of them stood Josiah, Jes the son of Shaphan, every man with his fire pan in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the old men of the house of Israel do in the dark, each man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say that Yahweh does not see this. Yahweh has forsaken the earth. He also said to me, Turn yet again, and you will see greater abominations than they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of, of Yahweh's house, which is toward the north. And behold, there was set women 
Weeping for Tammuz. Here's where it's getting really about today. In the footnote, Tammuz, I want you to listen. Tammuz was one of three things. The youthful, the youthful husband, son, or a lover of Ishtar, the fertility goddess of Babylon, called Ashtoreth and Canaan. And so the worship of Tam Tammuz still exists today. Easter. Ishtar, the fertility goddess. The women were in there weeping for Tammuz. And he still do, they still do. Have you seen this, O son of man? Turn yet again, and you will see greater abominations as the, than these. And he brought me into the inner court of, the, of Yahweh's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. There is sun worship now. This still is for today. Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Down in the footnote, it says, Scholars differ on exactly to what this refers, but agree that it is some obscure idolatrous rite that they were doing. Therefore I will also deal in fury. My eye will not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my tears, in my ears, with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. So this is the last chapter, chapter 9. Then he cried in my ears in a loud voice, saying, Cause those who have charged over the city to draw near, every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the road of the higher gate, which lies toward the north, and each man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one of them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the bronze altar. And the glory of the God of Israel went up from the cherub upon which it was to the threshold of the house, and he called to the men clothed, the man clothed in linen, who had a writer's inkhorn by his side. Now, this, this is very important too. And Yahweh said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the people who sigh and who cry over all the abominations that are done in the midst. And to the others, he said, in my hearing. So he's telling him to go mark the saint. Go after him through the city and strike. Do not let your eyes spare. Do not have pity. You will slay completely old and young, virgins, little children, and women. Do not come near anyone upon who is the mark. So he's to mark the saint and strike the sinner. Begin at my sanctuary. And at the footnote, it says, those in ministry will be judged and punished first. Then they begin with the elders who were in front of the house, and he said to them, defile the house and fill the courts. Begin at my sanctuary with the slain and go forth. And they went forth and slew in the city, and it was while they were slaying them. And I was left that I fell upon my face and cried out, Ah, Adonai. Will you destroy all the residue of Israel and your pouring out of your fury upon them, upon Jerusalem? Then he said to them, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of blood and the city full of perversity. And they say that Yahweh has forsaken the earth and does not see. And as for me also, my eye will not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will pay back their ways upon their own head, upon their head. And see the man clothed in linen who had the inkwell by his side reporting the matter. I have done as you have commanded me. And I think that was so for now. That he is marking the, marking the saint and he is going to strike the sinner. So I don't know. 
Let me know what you think.